Hello, welcome to SCP Annual Research Update. I'm Alex, and today I will introduce some of our work on urban monitoring by seismograph. The topic of my video is characterizing ambient seismic sources in an urban environment. The work is done by me, Feng Gang, Elita, and Yu Min. And if you're interested in this topic, you can get more detailed information from their video. The commonly used urban monitoring methods like camera, sound recorder, and cell phone, they can provide image, sound information, and GPS location. Those information can be used to detect in the most of the application like counting cars and human number. But those monitoring methods cannot provide any subsurface information. Some methods like total station prism, they can provide us deformation of the soil in long term, but cannot provide real-time vibration information. So in our video, we will introduce how to use the vibration data to monitor those ambient noises in urban environment. And we can use this information to detect both the urban activity and subsurface information. Human ears have the remarkable ability to detect, perceive, and differentiate sound from a vast range of sources, even when they are heavily overlapped. In this audio, we can identify noises from vehicle, airplane engine, and even from someone who is running. Similar to sound sensed by human eardrums, vibration recorded by different seismographs also contain a large amount of undiscovered information of the nature and the social environment. In the urban environment, the vibration is coming from different sources. We can observe the vibration from traffic, footstep of human, and from earthquake, and even from thunderstorm. Those seismic events can be separated into two broad categories, man-made events and nature events. In this video, we will present a comprehensive review of the observed urban activities and their seismic signature. We analyze data required by a few three-component geophone sensors deployed in Singapore. The first sensor is deployed at the exit of National University of Singapore, and the second one is located on the intersection between Pasar Panjang Port and West Coast Park. In the site, we can observe both vibration from footstepping park and vibration of the truck on the road. And the third one is nearby West Coast Highway. In this site, the vibration is mostly coming from vehicles on the highway. All the geophones are planted in the soil on the green belt by the road. The array has been recorded since April 7, 2020 with a sampling frequency of 500 Hz. We use smartphones to record video for short duration at the same locations, which are used to cross-validate in the following analysis. In urban environment, moving vehicles are one of the strongest seismic sources. Here we show the 122nd segment of C-component recording by the geophone at highway side. Here is a spectrogram of the records. The high frequency band between 30 and 150 Hz contains mostly the direct load impact of the passing vehicles. The red dashed line overlaid on the spectrogram is the average spectral energy between 30 and 150 Hz. By counting those peaks, the number of vehicles passing through can be known. We also observe the signal coming from vehicle engines. The red box shows the typical signal coming from accelerating engine with an increasing frequency. As the motorcycle accelerates away from the sensor, its frequency increases rapidly. In this situation, the vibrations are mostly coming from sound of the engine. The green box denotes a typical Christmas tree-like signal from a fast-moving vehicle. The vehicle travels at a much faster speed, the distance between sensor and the vehicle is much shorter, and generates loud engine sound as well as direct load impact. 
When the vehicle passes the set momentum, the loads of the vehicle cause a strong energy in the intersection between the tire and the ground, which makes the trunk of the tree. While the sound and the ground intersection from the engine marks the branches of the tree, it is a combination of the sound and load impact. Unlike the motorcycle red box, the engine frequency and the moving velocity of the vehicle is relatively constant. So the Doppler effect of the changing frequency with time is not that strong. The difference between the spectrogram provides visual features to potentially different vehicle types and their speed. We can also observe the signal from airplane. The airplane signal is transmitted in the air from engine to the ground and then converted to very small ground motion that is very small compared to the road traffic signal. However, it is clearly identified on the spectrogram as three orders of harmonics. Besides the strong road traffic like this, statometers also record vehicle pedestrian signal like this. Although the vibration induced by pedestrian is an order of magnitude smaller than that of motor traffic, the distinct calm shaped signature on the spectrogram serves as a very clear visual cue for the footsteps. The footsteps are more clearly observed in the band pass signal between 60 and 70 Hz. Each spike events correspond to one step, which information about the pedestrian can be derived from the observed signal. Firstly, the pedestrian walks at a cadence of 120 steps per minute, which amount to a moderate intensity physical training. Secondly, the pedestrian demonstrates a very clear differentiate in strength between altering steps, with one footstep 1.5 to 2 times stronger than the other one. Such information is very useful not only for event identification, but also for health monitoring. The urban seismic recording also contains abundant information of the environment. Here it shows a waveform and a spectrogram of the Z component of the seismograph at the port and park site. In this recording, we can identify two separate earthquakes struck within 6 minutes of one another. Because the raw seismic recording contains both port and park seismic noise activities, the seismic signal from earthquake is overwhelmed by the high-frequency urban noise. But in the spectrogram, the signal can be effectively separated. The signal related to human activities are higher than 2 Hz. The earthquake signal is mainly in the frequency band from 0.1 to 2 Hz. The earthquake events have two different features from man-made events. Firstly, they have much longer duration. And secondly, this shows strong energy in low frequency band within 0.1 to 2 Hz. From the average power spectral density within this band, the arrival time of the earthquake can be easily identified. P and S wave from the first earthquake can be observed at the time of 450 seconds and 550 seconds. And P and S wave from the second quake can be identified at the time of 780 second and 880 second. This clear separation in frequency can be used to detect earthquake in even noisier location such as highway site. As the top surface of the geophone stations are exposed, they can record direct impact of other nature events such as rainfall. Here we show the 5 minute recording around the start of heavy tropical rainstorm as the 130 second. The raindrops caused constant high frequency signal appeared as the faint view on the spectrogram. Compared with signal from road traffic, the signals from raindrops lack a strong low frequency component and appears nearly constant across all frequency for a much longer duration. So in this video we introduced urban seismic marching method provide us a new sense of the city in addition to conventional marching methods like cameras. And we show that 
both man-made and nature activity have distinct features in time and on their spectrogram. And based on those differences, this event can be utilized by machine learning based automatic identification algorithms. And thanks for your attention. If you have any questions and suggestions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.